Okay, sure. talking to Jeff and Maria today. So tell people what your documentary Skywalker's a love story is about. Uh, it, Skywalker's a love story follows a Russian couple uh, who trespass onto the world's highest buildings and do acrobatic stunts that they film with all sorts of cameras, including drones. Um, we use the extreme climbing as a metaphor for romantic trust. Um, ultimately, um, while the film plays like a thriller or a heist film, uh, we believe at its core, it's a, it's a love story. It's about people choosing to trust each other and come together, even when it's the scariest thing to do. And, and tell me about it on your end, Bria. How, how was, uh, do, do people call you crazy? I mean, why do you do what you do? <laughs> uh, that's a good question. Uh, I think we're after, obviously, as uh, documentary filmmakers, we're after, um, you know, unusual characters or characters that represent something for us in our own, you know, soul and in our own creative endeavors. Um, and uh, both Jeff and I have worked uh, with pretty extraordinary people, or filmed about extraordinary people over the course of our careers. And yes, these two are pretty up there. You would say these are possibly the craziest people you've ever seen on film. Possibly. <laughs> Do people ever tell you they're excited for your Star Wars documentary? <laughs> well, honestly, I, 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 you know, in choosing the title, um, that definitely came to mind, and I think it can only be positive. People tune in Luke Skywalker and they get a uh, rooftop, air, they'll stay for the ride and enjoy it. <laughs> So, uh, so come for Star Wars and, and, and stay for what, what what's actually in store. Yep. Come <laughs> for Star Wars, stay for rooftopping. Is there, what would you say attracted you to this material? Uh, I was an amateur um, tr trespasser, ninja missioner, rooftopper when I was in high school and into college and through my 20s. Um, for me, it was about finding... Uh, mysterious unknown spaces and making sense of my landscape uh, for myself as opposed to being in the conventional spaces that are predefined for you. And there was uh, a lot I learned about facing my fears and about my sense of self um, during those years. And when I found out that others were doing this same activity, um, not only in the next town over, but also all over the world. Um, in fact, taking it to new extremes and trespassing onto the tops of the world's highest buildings and doing acrobatic stunts, I became fascinated and took off my sort of ninja mission balaclava and put on my journalist cap and started tracking the rise of this growing phenomena, um, which was basically using social media to create rivalries and one-upmanship and challenging um, others to do bigger and better stunts. And I was looking for a story that wasn't just about daredevils and spectacle, but actually about the the ex spiritual experience that you get from, from this activity. And I found that 15 years after I started doing rooftopping um, in these two characters, uh, Ivan and Angela. And what I loved about their story is that it, it was a love story that um, we could use the extreme climbing to explore um, relational dynamics like trust and fear. Uh, and I went out and shot a sizzle with them and then um, XYZ films and library films. My friends at both of these companies took the leap of faith to invest in this very risky passion project. We hired Maria, who uh, essentially moved out and lived uh, with the Skywalkers for some years. And uh, over the course of seven years, the, the story took and turns ever could have seen coming, um, you know, with COVID and the war in, in Ukraine, um, ultimately climaxing in, in an incredible way that none of us could have ever imagined. Um, at the core, it's about people and their relationship. And you know, we wouldn't have made a film if Ivan and Angela weren't dynamic and dimensional and um, willing to share their most intimate and personal sides with us. Uh, they were incredibly vulnerable. Um, we got to see a relationship at work, both for in its in its glory when it works the best and it's inspiring, and also in the dark, tangled um, 
uh, challenges of of fear in in romance. Um, so hopefully it speaks to audiences about their own relationships. How do you describe the lifestyle scene in this documentary? How do we describe the lifestyle scene? How did you describe the, the lifestyle question? in general? Describe? Like, one thing you said that it was interesting oh. to me is it was spiritual. There was something spiritual about it. How do you describe I mean, the may, Maybe, Maria do, you, Maria, do you want to talk about Angela's childhood in the circus? Yes. Or... Uh, <clears throat> so Angela grew up with um, uh, circus fans, and um, she has memories of the circus very early on that sort of, uh, you know, she grew up in an atmosphere of um, being inspired by pushing one's um, uh, limits, you know, and doing risky things as acrobats do, or, you know, at that time, tiger tamers would do. Think, uh, people who chose to do, to live an unusual lifestyle, even though it wasn't really about, it didn't bring them any money, they weren't really rich, but people, um, her parents and the other surface performers were very happy kind of happy with what they had at the time. So she, her whole approach to life is a little bit different than a regular regular person, as you would say. Um, so we did have several moments there where for them to be, you can see it in the film, where for them to be on the rooftop, to be above the world, sort of a spiritual experience. And they their understanding of what's risky is different from a normal person, let's say. <laughs> Okay, and she says uh, yeah. at one point in the film that, that the rooftoping is her trapeze, that she sort of had this glorified nostalgia for her parents performing in the tent and traveling with the circus, and that they're a modern day version of a traveling circus, her and her boyfriend Ivan coming soon to a to a city near you. And she uses the lessons of the circus to kind of inform what they do. Um, that, you know, their full self-realization is on the other side of their fear and these become the mantras that drives her. Are you guys excited for this documentary to screen at the Sundance Film Festival? Couldn't be more thrilled. It is a dream come true. It is the ultimate place to have a premiere on opening night at the festival. Um, it is the, you know, the stamp of excellence and the stamp of ingenuity um, that we were hoping for all along in making this film it was it was what gave us energy when we were drained after the long nights um so we're thrilled that it paid off that's beautiful i'm, I'm glad i could be uh, a, a a part of this experience with you guys i'm, I'm living vicariously through you right now Do you, <laughs> you so enjoy film festivals i mean it it depends you know this one we're we're going to be looking for a distributor uh, as well uh, so yeah. there is there's a certain amount of the process that's work and busyness and and you just get lost in the uh, you know and in, in how and in how hectic it can all be but um it's thrilling and to be able to put your work out in the world and have audiences um give you feedback is ultimately why we do it so uh yeah it'll be an, it'll be an emotional roller coaster certainly uh, do you guys like reading documentary manifestos? And if yes, is there a specific one we could read that aligns with the filmmaking approach that, that you took? I have an idea here, Maria. Can I take this one? Please. Uh, there was a book by Hakeem Bey called The Temporary Autonomous Zone that was like a bit of a Bible for me when I first was doing rooftoping. Um, I, I wouldn't say it's a documentary manifesto but i do think it's a rooftoping manifesto uh, which is ultimately what this this film is about beautiful well guys thanks so much for your time i really appreciate it and is there anything else you would like to mention about skywalker's a love story before i let you go maria it's a film like you've never seen before i guarantee you that <laughs> and once you see it it'll be seared in your brain for quite some time quite a long time I, I, yeah I'll, I'll jump on that which is that it is a physiological experience is what we're hearing from people who focus grouped it with us that you know it goes beyond sort of tr uh, stimulating the intellect and the emotions it actually takes root in the body uh, a lot of that is, is because of vertigo um, but a big part of the action of the film, the scenes, the dialogues, the fighting, the making up happens on rusty spires and on the tips of skyscrapers and um, hanging off of cranes. And so 
you spend a lot of the 100 minute runtime, the 99 minute runtime um, looking down uh, from in exceptional heights. And the way that that plays in your body is going to be really interesting to see with audiences. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. <laughs>